What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over the Fibonacci numbers because I haven't actually made an explanation tutorial in a long time. Okay, so you probably know what Fibonacci numbers are. Uh, basically, it's just taking the previous term plus the term before it and then that'll be your next term. And that's what this uh, equation that is, is defined as. That's the Fibonacci numbers. So if we take a look at here in the next next picture here, we have 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89. And the reason why this is that is because 0 plus 1 is equal to 1, and that's the next number of 1. Then 1 plus 1 is 2, and that's the next number 2. 1 plus 2 is 3, and that's the next number 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. That's the next number 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. 8 plus 13 is 21. 13 plus 21 is 34. 21 plus 34 is 55. 55 plus 34 is 89. So that's basically the gist of Fibonacci numbers. All right. Now, uh, there's a few properties that are pretty interesting that you probably haven't heard about yet, but they might actually come in handy. All right. The first property is Cassini's identity, which basically is just telling you that if I take the previous term, then multiply it by the next term, then subtract by the current term squared, it'll tell you the, the current sign, right? If I, if it'll tell me if uh, the current sign that my current number is on. So it would tell me a uh, negative one to the nth and that's just, will tell you the current sign of what it's on. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool, I guess, but you might, you may or may not need it, but it's a cool identity anyway. All right. The next rule is the addition rule. So basically it's just taking the current term. And if I jump by the K steps to the, to the right, right, that term is just going to be whatever value is at that case step multiplied by the next term added by the previous term for the case value multiplied by the current term. So that's just, I know this is like a handful. It's kind of confusing, but yeah, that's basically what the addition rule is. Basically, if I jump by case steps, whatever value the, in my next case step is, it will just be the value at the previous at the case term multiplied by the next term plus the k minus one term multiplied by the current term. So yeah. All right guys, now if you were to substitute k equal to n, because this property works, um, and if you were simplifying it, uh, basically this is the same, like if I take two times n, like the if I'm on the nth term and take two times n, that's gonna equal to the nth term multiplied by the term right after it plus the term before it. So because of that previous property, if you take any number k and you multiply it by n of the nth term, that this number of the Fibonacci number is going to be a multiple of the nth term. So that's pretty cool. You could use that pretty crazily with GCD though. All right, so the inverse is also true. If the nth term is a multiple of the nth term, then we know m is a multiple of n. Okay, this identity is kind of crazy. If I just take the GCD of the m, mth term and the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence, right? That number is going to equal to the GCD of individual m and n, that m, m and n, and that that term is the answer to the GCD. So that's pretty that's pretty crazy though. I didn't know you could do that, but that's that's a thing in Fibonacci. Okay, so you could also represent Fibonacci as binary numbers. And I think, I don't know why, but hey, this is a thing. So to do this, you would use a simple greedy algorithm. You're going to loop through the Fibonacci numbers from the largest to the smallest until you find one that is less than or equal to n. And then suppose this number was f of i, right? Then we're going to subtract this number from n and then put a 1 in the i minus 2 position of the binary number the binary index from leftmost to rightmost bit. And then we're just gonna keep repeating this until there is no remainder. At the end, we add a one to the final code word in the end. So then that would basically just tell us the uh, representation of the binary code. So yeah, and if you see there, f of two is one one f, f of three is zero one one, f of five plus f of two is one zero one one, f of six is zero 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 one one f, f of six plus f of two is one zero 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 one one, f of seven plus f of five plus f of two is one zero one zero one zero one one. Okay. Okay. So the next 
cool property is that you don't have to actually repeatedly add up numbers in a loop using a loop. Um, you could actually do this in constant time without actually using any loops using this equation. So f of n is equal to one plus square root of five over two to the nth power subtract by one minus square root of five over two to the nth power divided by square root of five. So this is a property that was created using something called generating functions. Uh, I'm not like 100% sure how they came up with this formula, but it does it does work though. All right, the next property is that if you were to put these, uh, the previous term and the current term in a matrix, it's going to equal to the two previous terms before multiplied by the matrix 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay. And uh, if you were to denote the this matrix as 0, 1, 1, 1 as P, you'll realize that the current term and the next term is equal to the zeroth term and the first term multiplied by P to the nth. So we're going to raise the power of P, the matrix P to the nth power, and then multiply by F of 0, F of 1, and that'll get you the nth term and the nth plus 1 term. Okay, so the last property is basically just using the binary exponentiation of the previous uh, previous property that we had before, and then it's going to use this to calculate the Fibonacci numbers. Um, I don't see a reason to explain the uh, this code because you could just black box it anytime you need it. You could just copy and paste this, but uh, basically this code returns f of n and f of n plus one as a pair, and it solves the uh, binary exponentiation and it solves the fast way to calculate the Fibonacci numbers pretty quickly. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.